So in this video, we get to take a look at visual analysis and modeling a two-dimensional truss uh, just using this simple program. And honestly, this is a super useful tool to figure out bar forces in a truss. All right, so let's get started. So to create a truss model in visual analysis, I'm gonna follow seven basic steps. So those steps include starting with um, setting up, you know, step, step one is just setting up the project. To, and for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the model 2D and set the units appropriately. So coming back here, to make the model 2D two-dimensional, what we wanna do is change the structure type to plane frame. Unless you're getting into like some complex three-dimensional analysis or space frame, a plane frame is perfectly fine for what we're gonna do here. Uh, in previous versions of, of visual analysis, they had a plane truss here, but um, for what we're gonna do is we're gonna set and use a plane frame. Okay, and then when we look at units, we can go to our manage units dialog, and we're just gonna use the USA mixed. So that works, that's pretty good, and that should be all set. The other thing that you could do here is you can take a look at your grid. Uh, for this one, I know I have like a three foot dimension somewhere, so I'm just gonna do 12 by 12, and that'll work pretty well. So that helped us, we set up our project, and the second thing that we're gonna do here is go ahead and define our geometry. So what does this problem look like? Well, what we have is we have a, you know, along the bottom, we have a 12 foot dimension here. So I'm just gonna take this out 12 feet. And then, you know, coming up from this point, we're gonna come up three feet. Coming up from this point, we have uh, another three, or not, I'm sorry, we go up six feet. And then we're gonna just start keep, you know, connecting dots here. And really you can see, I'm just going from node to node and you have these little halos around some of the nodes. So we have to take a look at that. But what you'll also see here is when I drew this, I drew the one, one big piece. So this doesn't actually, you know, it's not actually separated into to two members. And I don't like that. When I draw a trust member, I like to split the members where possible and split them specifically at crossing members. So to get there, what I did was, again, I'll, you know, I just did it for this one, but now I have two separate members. For the bottom, one I'm going to do the same thing I can right click and say split members and for this one I can do crossing members I could say I want uh, three you know three members as well but because I already drew the vertical webs I'm just going to do the crossing members and now essentially what we did is we created you know beams that basically go in between each of the nodes here. So this works pretty well. It gets you your member set up. If you know that you're doing like deflection, maybe a principal virtual work, something, you know, a problem, you, you could put in your database shapes or you could put in um, specific shapes that you want here. So maybe these are made out of rods and the tension members are, are rods. Oh, or, uh, you know, you have uh, how uh, structural sections that you could use as well so we could you know we could change this section to make it whatever we want but realistically um, for what we're doing we're not analyzing or designing the members so we're not going to worry so much about that but what that does is it did allow us to define our geometry it defined all the members the lengths the sections the materials and that's what we did for step two so for step three, what we want to do is go ahead and define our supports or boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are what, you know, limit this thing from moving left and right, up and down and, and rotating. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this node. This is a pin. So with a pin, I'm going to set a DX and DY restraint. That means this is, you know, there's going to be no translation at this node in the left or right or up or down movements, but it is allowed to rotate. So um, I'm going to do something similar here, but because it's a roller, I'm only going to select DY. It's only going to provide one restraint you can see that by this you know highlighted arrow here that it's only providing one restraint so step three we defined our support conditions and step four we are going to go and define beam connections and with a truss this is really important because at each node we have an internal pin and so at, at each node i mean it'd be so convenient if i could just click and press shift and, and select all of the nodes at once and say i want all these to be internal pins but Unfortunately, this program doesn't work that way. 
But one of the things that I can do and one of the things I need to do is come in here and set my simple reactions or simple connection types, I should say. So my simple connection types, when I, when I select the members, it's just, so to select all the members, I'm going to hold shift and press and click one of the members that selects everything. And then what I like to do is I like to just make everything simple connect. But there's going to be a problem because if I analyze this, well, what's going to happen? It's going to it's going to be unstable. And the reason it's unstable is because we have too many simple connections. OK, and really what that means is for a trust, what I need to do is probably come back to this one and this one. And I'm going to make these two rigid. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a second. So if I make these two rigid. You'll notice now that it, each of these four joints that those two members connect or to connect to at, at, at this joint, for example, there's two green circles, you know, and then one that doesn't have a green circle. What that means is it, basically the left member here can't transmit moment to the joint. Uh, the right member here can't transmit moment to the joint. This mo this member can transmit moment to the joint, but it has nowhere to go because the other two can't take it. So whenever we're, we're dealing with trusses in visual analysis, one member and one and only one member at that joint needs to have essentially a rigid constraint can't have one of those green green circles um, and maybe you're working on your your model and you don't have those green circles well to get them you come to model filter member details and you can click on or off the end releases as you like okay but you'll notice for these four joints we have all have green circles all members all member ends have green circles except one okay the problem is though at the supports we still have, you know, all the members having green circles. So this is where we have to come in and select kind of pick and choose. So here, what I'm going to say is, well, let's try rigid simple. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the start one rigid, the end one simple. And you'll see at this joint, now we have one green circle, one that's not. Okay. And here we have to do something similar. But on this one, I'm going to pick, um, you know, simple rigid so that the right hand side it's rigid. And again, we have one and only one member at this joint that is not simple. It's not released. So with trusses, setting internal pins becomes really important because now what we've just essentially done is said that moment cannot be transferred at any of these joints. And what that does, it makes all the forces axial. And it's an incredibly important step when you're analyzing a truss. So step five is to come in and define the loading. And with the loading, what we want to do is go to load case manager. I'm going to turn off the load combinations. We're not doing load combinations, but if you were doing load combinations with deflection checks or something along those lines, you could turn on a variety of load combinations. In addition, I'm going to come in and turn off the self weight. We're not going to use the self weight. We're going to neglect the self weight in this truss. And lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my nodes and apply uh, nodal loads where they need to be to match the problem. So for here, I have a nodal load. I'm going to use a minus six kip force. So at, at, in the y direction, I'm going down with six kips, and down is the minus sign. And if you get it wrong, you can click on this and you know click on this, select it, and change it, and the modify uh, tab under the project manager. And the last. This is the last uh, value that I need here is I need to put a load in at the top to match the problem. And now I'm going to take four kips and to the right is positive. So that has now defined my loads, right? And the last step that I need to do is to analyze the model. So to analyze the model, good news, this is the easy part. All we have to do is click a button. And if we've done it right, it should work wonderfully. And you'll see here, it looks like it worked well. And if you have models where you have some deflection going on in some of these members, you probably didn't do your end connections correctly. And it's something that you're going to want to take a look at and troubleshoot. But for this one, what we can do is come back to results filter. We can look at it. We can show our reactions, see if those match what we expect them to. And you can see we have two kips on the left pushing up, four kips on the right pushing up. And that works pretty well. In addition, what we can do is we can come in here to result type. And I like this, especially for trusses to go to axial force. And here you can see, you can see like the uh, the exact value of those axial forces and the cool piece here is they all match what we expected to by the hand calculations um, but it gives you additional detail so that you can 
uh, make it work well. So here again, you can go to the diagram, you can leave the colors on, uh, you can show color bands or not, uh, but this allows you some flexibility in how you look at it. So the last step here that we're gonna work on is taking a look at creating a report. And for trusses, what I would wanna do is under report view, um, again, I like to do all the structure tables, all the load tables, because that gives somebody that doesn't know anything about this model the chance to actually go and build this model. Enough information so that they could model it exactly the same way as you. And that's important, especially when you're starting to submit documentation to other people. So this, you know, we have all the structure tables, all the load tables. It gives us a lot of information here. But then the last thing, the last piece that I'm going to put in here, I remember for Forces. And you'll notice that when I put this in, there's only a couple members in here. And when I get to a trust, especially, I'm going to click on this table and then I'm going to say, I'm going to click off the extreme rows only. And the nice thing about this is now I have every single member. You'll see the one here gives me the load case and load combination. We only have one load combination, but if you had multiple load combinations, you could see which combination controlled. But real quickly, you can get FX, which is uh, the the minimum and fx here is the maximum axial force and in a truss you expect it to be the same because we're not we're neglecting the self weight and there's no other you know forces that are that are shown in there but we can you know we can also confirm that there's no shear no moment and that those pins are working the way we want them to. So this is the, kind of the basics of getting into uh, modeling a truss in visual analysis. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. But until next time, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.